All right. If you remember, uh, I covered the Israeli conflict. All right. And I, I went through the four phases of continuous operations, talked about the reserves getting called up. Uh, they were calling up 360,000 dudes. That was a week ago. Well, today they have roughly 164,000 of the 360,000 they called actually show up. All right. Um, that's probably there. More people are coming in. But if they really want to have the effect that they want, they're going to probably have to wait. All right. Um, I talked about pulling equipment out of storage. And what I have been hearing is uh, Israel has the M60 tank, which has been upgraded. They call it the Magach or the Magog or whatever, M-A-G-A-C-H. And they're technically the reserve armor units for Israel. Those are now on the move. They're getting staged and they're getting worked on. So what is that saying? It is my opinion that Israel knows this is going to be a minimum of a two-front fight. Minimum. So they're getting ready. Uh, let's see. Again, they're training the new troops. Now, uh, I've been hearing some reports that all of these reservists that have been called up have having a hard time getting their hands on uh, enough equipment or proper equipment. It's similar to what happened in Russia, I guess. Um, I don't know if Israel maintained a stockpile to equip half a million guys. Who knows? But uh, they're collecting all kinds of money. People are sending stuff over there. We had what was it? We had a rapper or somebody here in the United States fill it up full of Kevlar vests and fly it over there in his private jet. Listen, it is what it is. Things are going crazy. When we first started in Iraq, there wasn't enough vests to go around. People did the same thing, so I understand. All right. Um, they're reassembling the chain of command for the 360,000 people they're bringing in. Uh, they're hoping to increase their standing army to two-thirds of its size uh, by the end of the month. We will see what happens. We'll see if they get the full 360,000. I think they'll come close, you know, 310, 320 maybe. I don't know if they'll be able to get to the 360,000 unless they decide to, uh, you know, activate dudes who are 38 and beyond in age. So we'll see. Uh, there's been massive amounts of blood donations. And remember I talked about... Uh, setting up mass casualty facilities. Uh, I know that they're organizing this. I don't believe anything has been set up, but they're they're taking all kinds of blood donations. Now, typically, when you uh, bank a bunch of blood, you have a uh, inkling that you just might need it. All right, 80% of Iron Dome's reserves have been expended. Meaning, if Hezbollah decides to get all stupid and launch a bunch of rockets, there's really not much more the Iron Dome can withstand. It has literally been, you know, firing hundreds, if not thousands, of rockets a day for the past week. Again, this is just a rumor uh, from what I'm hearing here. Again, I'm a I'm a I'm a trained intel analyst, so I. You know, I look between, I read between the lines, and I see what's not being said by what is being said. I know it's hard to explain, but it is what it is. All right, we're talking about that hospital that was hit that hit, had 500 casualties. Israel's put out a, an official statement that it wasn't them. It was a rocket fired from Hamas, which uh, I'm going to be honest, those things are not the best. So... I would have to err on the side of Israel on this one. And the casualties are anywhere between 500 and 680 at last count. Um, that is a lot of people 
from one rocket strike. So, yeah, I it hit outside a courtyard of a hospital. I don't know if it was full of people, but you know, that's that's a big hit right there. And on a side note, <clears throat> Hamas intentionally stores weapons and ammo below hospitals. So under the Geneva Convention, if you're using a hospital as a staging point for attacks, it's no longer a protected, you know, area. But the media is going to media, and they get all stupid about it. Okay. We have Hezbollah probing and harassing fires on the Israeli forces. Um, there has been some KIAs, uh, mainly on the Hezbollah side, from artillery counterfire. Uh, I believe there's a couple vehicles that were hit with anti-tank missiles. But, uh, I mean, listen, that is pretty much a leading indicator that uh, Hezbollah is going to get involved in this. They're, if they don't, I would be very surprised. Uh, the USA has uh, sent Tier 1 units that are now on the ground. That's uh, SEAL Team 6 and or Delta Force, or perhaps both of them. I cannot get any information if they're actually running ops to rescue anyone as of yet, uh, but you know they operate in an, basically in a closed loop, and I really it's really hard for me to get any information behind two or three layers that they operate behind. <clears throat> the 82nd Airborne has been moved one up on their alert status, so I believe that uh, usually 82nd has like one battalion on a four-hour recall. Uh, if they've moved up on the alert status, they probably have three battalions on the four to six-hour recall, and everyone else has been moved up. So they're on recall in six to eight hours. So we'll see what happens. Uh, 2,000 Marines, along with a, a, a Navy float, has uh, been sent to the that area. Uh, nothing says uh, fuck you more than uh, 2,000 pissed off Marines who don't want to be there, don't want to be exposed to the heat, but they have to show up there. It's, if they use them, it's usually not a good thing. Uh, there are videos out there of executed Israelis' bodies, and they've been paired up to actual security footage showing the individuals being walked out of their residence and then shot in the street. And there are videos out there of actual executions of prisoners. All right. Now, Hamas, Hezbollah, and a lot of those terrorist organizations rely heavily on fear and terror. And one of the main ways they make that happen is by filming this kind of shit. This is next level evil stuff here. All right. Iran said they will attack if Gaza is invaded. Uh, well, we just sent another aircraft carrier and all of the flot flotilla that goes with it. So we'll see how that plays out. Now, there's been a no bunch of numbers out there about hostages that have been captured as per uh, when the, the attack started. The numbers I've seen go anywhere from 150 all the way up to 241. So I don't know what the actual number is. I know they've actually showed some videos of individuals who are in captivity who are not dead as of yet. Uh, again, it is what it is. The number of attackers that uh, took place on the Saturday attack is numbered between 2,500 and 5,000. Uh, roughly 1,500 of those individuals didn't plan on coming back uh, because they didn't have first aid kits. And there's a lot of things that uh, you can tell what a soldier's mission is by what he has been carrying or what he's not carrying all right so they basically these individuals went across the border on a one-way trip meaning they did not intend on coming back apparently being martyred over there is big in their culture um 
it is what it is. I'm just telling you the deal. All right, so <clears throat> apparently they have found a bunch of the tunnels below, uh, you know, Gaza, leading out of Gaza, and they're now doing probing attacks. And rumor is they're actually sending in some drones and robotic equipment in there to see what's going on. And so far, roughly 200,000 people in Gaza have been displaced thus far. All right. So what is this telling me? This is telling me that I do not believe a full-out go is going to take place right away. Um, my bet is any time after the, this upcoming Saturday or two, not this Saturday. That'll be, yeah. So that'll be one, one week from now. We'll make it roughly 14 days since the attack. That's the bare minimum in my opinion. Uh, some of the other individuals I've been talking to said somewhere towards the end of the month, beginning of November for this, you know, cleansing to take place. We shall see. Again, we have uh, Biden going to the Middle East. I have no idea what he's going to do. But what I find, ex you know, really insulting is that Dick Taster in chief has not even gone to the southern border, which is right now in full invasion mode. They are basically overrun down there. But he will get on a plane in his fucked up, sorry, uh, you know, sick mind and body fly to the other side of the planet to talk to another country that they have to, the right to defend themselves and enforce their borders. If that doesn't add insult to injury, I have no idea what does. But anyway, that's what's going on thus far, and hopefully we will see what's up. I'm really worried about them pulling out the, the Magok tanks uh, that speaks volumes that they're really expecting for this to get really bad and fight on multiple fronts. And you and I both know if that happens, more than likely, it's going to get much worse. You know, hopefully we can maintain and keep it regional, but it's been quite a few years since we decided to go all out. There are now way too many of us on the planet. And uh, we are really good at killing each other. So that is what I'm expecting to happen. There you go, Jimmy. Yep. And uh, while you were uh, doing your little spiel there, Pop, I uh, just happened to uh, pull up a uh, twatter to uh, do a little bit of researching and whatnot. Well, um well, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring up the videos and whatnot and show them. Um, the German chancellor was just evacuated right before his plane took off from Tel Aviv. He was rushed into his motorcade and evacuated to a shelter. Biden is expected to land in five hours. Hmm. Yeah, what could go wrong? Yeah, and uh, I'll bring up uh, just a couple more uh, videos here that I've... Uh, reposted for everybody so again if you guys aren't a you guys are on twitter give me a follow jimmy bones 90 you'll find me i'm uh not too hard to find <clears throat> but um the uh due to the uh now uh, the uh in the instance with the uh, the hospital and whatnot and both sides uh pointing fingers at each other um the uh the Israeli embassies in Jordan and I can't remember what the other one was are, have been a, uh, well, let's just say, you know, fiery, but mostly peaceful protests. Yep. Well, uh, here's the, uh, the U S embassy in Lebanon. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's hope that uh, those folks actually got a phone call to evacuate. You know, yeah, this is Benghazi. 
it's just not going to end well. No, not going to be good at all. Uh, let's see. And then what was the other one here? Uh, oh, yep. Just a, a few more uh, pictures from the embassy in Lebanon here from uh, Benny Johnson here. So, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. P peace while a, like I said, mo mo mostly peaceful, but fiery protests. Yeah. So, uh, and remember the uh, the potato head in chief, or the uh, the dictator that was selected that we like to call him around here, yep. is supposed to be landing in that area in five hours. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's not going to be good. That's all I got to know. Let's uh... Uh, listen. Um... A lot of those weapons they left behind in Afghanistan are now in that area of the country, and there are shoulder-fired anti-aircraft missiles there, so anything could happen. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, and if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonkulous.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the meat case box.